scared of Jurassic Park watching it as a kid. The original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like the raptors are coming out. Yeah. And like the T-Rex is... Oh, hey. <laughs> Welcome to B-Movie Mania. I'm Mike Hayes. I'm Paul Brooks. And we're going to review a movie tonight, aren't we, Paul? Two of them. Two. That's typically what we do on the show. It's a system where we review two movies. <laughs> Normally also, in terms of systems... Mm -hmm. I'll introduce myself, and then you introduce yourself, and then continue on with introducing the first oh, movie. Oh, you're right. So that's what I'm getting into. You're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> Tonight on the show, horror movies. Mike, I love horror movies. I hate them. I mean, I like them. Yeah. But I hate them. Okay. Scaredy Cat. Oh, yeah, well, with Jurassic Park. Well, yeah. Um... We have two films that we're going to be reviewing tonight. Both of them horror movies. Both of them, uh, I, we'll have to check the dates, but like sort of late 70s, maybe early, early 80s, 80s sort of stuff going on. So kind of an 80s horror themed episode going on tonight on mm -hmm. B-Movie Mania. Our first film is called what? Blood Rage. Blood Rage. Rated Indeed. R. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Uh, here's, what's, here's what's interesting. It says that it came out in 1987. That's Feels right. a little older to we me. Got, yeah, we had a confusion watching it. We kept thinking it was like 81 or something for some reason. Right. It's 89, yeah. Well, first, right off the bat, absolutely fantastic cover art right there. Mm -hmm. Really good stuff. And really, to be honest, I thought a pretty good movie. No, oh, it was pretty fantastic, yeah. Entertaining, at least. Oh, certainly, to say the least. Yeah. Uh, an interesting movie about a, well, crazy person. Well, there's this kid at the beginning. Yeah. It starts out, like, ten years earlier or whatever. Mm -hmm. And there's this kid who, for reasons that I don't think are really explained, just, like, picks up an axe. He's at like a drive-in movie theater where everyone's watching this movie. And he picks up an axe and just starts just hacking people up. Get out of here, creep. Hey, hey, get out of here. What are you doing? Get it off. Feed it. Yeah, he has a twin brother and he blames it on the twin brother. He sets him up. For some reason, the twin brother, I mean, I think he's just scared and he's in shock after seeing his brother do this. He's just a nice kid. He is a sweetheart. And he loves his brother, mm -hmm. but his brother, not a very nice kid. He's a crazy kid. Yeah. And so, yeah, then, then we jump cut 10 years later, and who has been blamed and been in a psychiatric ward for this many years? The brother. The one who didn't do it. But in spite of the dramatic nature of today's outburst, I considered the setback relatively minor because Todd remained focused on establishing his innocence and getting on with a normal life. Get me out of here! I never killed anybody! I must now begin the long process of preparing him for the dangers of the world from which he has been sheltered. So the whole, like, crux of this movie, the whole basis of it, is that one brother has escaped, the innocent brother has escaped the psycho ward, mm -hmm. he's coming back home, and so now the guilty brother mm -hmm. is uh, killing people again? Well, not yet. Well, but no, he's, he's playing it cool at first. Right. Well, seeing as how we have a new head of the family, I think it's time you started pulling your own weight around here. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Hey. 
the the way that they set everything up and and the way that they structured it really did hold my attention. I think that they did a good job of setting mm -hmm. everything up like that. And you're like, oh, this is kind of interesting the way that they're handling this. Yeah. So, so I, th I think plot wise, layout of it was pretty good. Mm hmm. Uh, not so good. Right. The mom. The mom. Her acting was. <laughs> I'm Brad. He's probably out looking. I'll stay here in case Todd comes home. But Terry. Very careful. He's probably very frightened. And Terry, please put on a sweater. It's cold outside. The blue one. Uh, I was very melodramatic. Yeah. Way over the top and very confusing. Very confusing. She spent how many scenes? Like the movie progressed through scenes, like movies will do. But she stayed on like one couch and kept calling a phone number for all of those scenes. She it was spends like a solid third of the movie like on the phone, like with the operator, <laughs> like, and you're not sure what she's trying to do, like no. call the call the police or or her like husband, which something he's not answering. What? What? What number do I want? Get me my boyfriend. No, please get me my boyfriend. Um, the worst part of the movie, uh, and I think I think you know what I'm getting at here, was what? The mom? The mom was not great, <laughs> but the worst part of the movie, everyone in this movie has horrible teeth. Oh, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that one. <laughs> before we start, before we start. 1981, we've never been to the dentist type teeth, oh, and it's just hard to look at. It really is. You know? Flat frightening. Flat frightening is, is definitely yeah. how I would describe it. Yeah. There's also, there's a scene uh, where the mom goes to see is it Terry? Uh, Todd. Todd is the one who, Todd is the one who got pinned for the murders. Yes. And didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Terry is the one who committed the murders. Yeah. And is out like having fun and mm -hmm. you know living hanging, his life. Yeah, hanging with girls and all that. You know. Oh I think I got you. Oh. Come on, it's a football game, not a kissing contest. Because they're like, they're like twenty two now or whatever Something, you know yeah well they're of legal drinking age yeah 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 there's this scene towards the beginning where the mom goes to hang out with todd in his like psychiatric facility or oh whatever. yeah yeah and there's like i don't know what happened but there was like a box of food that like fell apart and they were like together like fumbling with it like <laughs> i don't remember that they were like so traumatized by this like box of peanut butter yeah. that was like falling apart or something. You don't remember that, huh? No. Honey, honey, just stop it. Honey, please. It was weird. Wow. A lot of weird stuff in this it movie. It sounds... Well, I know. It sounds like it, but I know it was weird. You saw it. I watched it mm -hmm. intently. Well, Paul, I'm glad you said that. Yeah. Because that brings us to our first segment. Hmm. Who would you fire? <sighs> From the movie. I mean, you could say anyone, but I would prefer <laughs> you to focus on this film we're blood blood reviewing here. Yes. Okay, yeah. It's actually pretty easy. Um, there's a psychiatrist who, uh, once Todd escapes, she thinks that it's a good idea to, like, sort of, like, get into the hunt. And she inexplicably brings with her like a student or someone Something. from the school who who shows up with a gun Gun. Now listen, 
I'm Dr. Berman. I'm from the Institute. I want to see your mother. Dr. Berman, yeah. did you find him? No, I haven't even looked yet. What's that gun? And he's like 18 years old, and he has a gun, and I don't know what she was thinking, and she's fired. She's gone. Fair enough. Who would you fire from Blood Rage? How about you? Paul, mm -hmm. as much as I'd like to name another actress, the mom, I think the bigger problem in this film was the lighting director. The lighting director? It, we haven't just talked about it, but it was just, everything was really dark, and, I mean, it was just all over the place. It's not cranberry sauce, Artie. It's not cranberry sauce. Very little definition to a lot of stuff. Mm, it could yeah. have been a lot better. I think they used a lot of natural, like, there's a lamp on this table. There's that. It was a lot of just, like, poor lighting, I thought. Right. Well, psychiatrist and lighting guy, you're fired. This camera. Oh. Let's talk about some of the things that this movie really got right. Because it really did do a lot of things... Uh, really well, There's I thought. a lot of really good stuff in it. First of all, the effects, the visual effects, the, the, the gore, the props, you know, and things like that. They, whoever was working on this film did a really good job. They did a that. fantastic job. The blood was copious. Copious, yes. Well, look what the cat brought in. <laughs> They really did not skip out on um, making sure that the payoffs for, you know, this, mm -hmm. there's this guy out here who's killing all these people. And quite frankly, the body count is pretty high in this movie. Well, everyone. Yeah. What are you doing out there? Speaking of, what's, can we talk about the pool of which this body count comes from? Because sure. this whole movie takes place in an apartment complex. Like, not just a single building, but one of those ones where, like, there's probably, like, two or three units yeah. in a building, and, like, there's probably a lake in the middle of right. it. Like, one of those type of things. Out in the woods, you know, kind of a thing. And it's just, like, a lot of the... You know, everyone involved seems to be living in that, that apartment complex. People get brought into it. People go run and hide in their home or a neighbor's home. And they don't know who to trust. Yeah. Um, and are you saying that the, the, because of the scope of it is so kind of small? Is that... No, I just think it's funny that they obviously just had access to this apartment <laughs> complex. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of weird to figure out, too, because you're like, <laughs> is, where, where are they exactly? We know that they're in Jacksonville, Florida. We know this. But other than that, they're sort of in this vague sort of, you know, they don't really set it up too much that I remember. Mm -hmm. No, not really, no. Yeah, but whatever, you know? They showed, like, I think the establishing shot was the sign for, like, what, Shadow Forest, Shadow Lane. Shadow, shade, shadow Shady. Sha sha shady sha Shadows. Shabby. Shabba. Shabbity. Shady Shadows. Shady. Something like that. Not a perfect movie. There's some cheesy stuff going on, mm -hmm. but it's fun to watch. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some stuff that really is really well done. To me, that's good horror movie watching right there. Well, know? then, Paul, what would you rate it? I'm not going to get too fancy with this one. I'm just going to go one hand, three fingers. Nice. Mm hmm. Right there. Pretty solid. Feel good about yourself, makers of Blood Rage. This is not bad right here. That's pretty good. Great. What about you? What do you give Blood Rage? I give Blood Rage a fist holding a knife and a scared five fingers. Holy cow, wow. That's pretty intense right there. Mm -hmm. Well, that's our review of Blood Rage. And now let's take it out to our man on the street, JP, to see what other people have to say about this classic early 80s film, Blood Rage. JP, what's up? Guys, that movie you're talking about sounds really great and I'll definitely check it out, but I have a secret that I can't keep to myself anymore. Sleepless in Seattle. 
It's an earlier Tom Hanks movie. Not a lot of people have seen him before. Uh, you know, and a studio exec took a real chance on this up-and-coming kid, but we're really glad that they did because we get to see Tom Hanks look for love in the grunge capital of the world. Now, this movie has everything. Special effects. A and, you know, the comb I was in, it makes forming new memories a little difficult, but who can forget how likable Meg Ryan is in this movie. You got to get out there and rent it today. Thanks, Mike and Paul. JP, thanks for telling us all about it. Horror movie number two on the horror movie edition of B-Movie Mania. Mike, what do you got for us? <laughs> I have a doozy. Right here. Please. Take it. Do it. The interesting thing about the movie that we have for number two mm -hmm. is it takes place on top of a mountain, mm -hmm. but it also takes place deep underground. Oh, so true. A little something called Mountaintop Motel Massacre. Holy cow. That's alliteration. Oh, is it? Did you notice that? No. Okay. It is. Three M's. Very cool. Um... Check the, out that cover. That woman is crazy. That is the best part of the movie. The, <laughs> you, I couldn't have said it better. Uh -huh. This movie starts out, and it has a lot of the tropes from a classic 80s horror film. Yes. There's, there's a car with a guy who picks up girls in it. Oh, thank God, a car. Wait him down, wait him down. Maybe give us a lift. Get in. There is there's a creepy hotel motel thing. This is it. What the hell did you expect? A holiday inn? You know I can't afford that. There's you know a young couple, a young married, just newlywed couple. <laughs> There's a sheriff. Open up. Open up. I'm the sheriff. Open up. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that is right, just right for the picking. Yeah. In seems the slaughtering. Seems, yeah, it seems like it should go well. It doesn't. Well, you know, <laughs> well and honestly, for the people in it, it doesn't go that bad. <laughs> like, it could have been a lot worse. <laughs> uh, this It says here that this movie uh, was released in 1983 and that's that would have been about my guess it's an early 80s sort of look to it you yeah know. definitely tell us about what happens in mountaintop motel massacre not a massacre mm. <laughs> just sort of a mountaintop motel inconvenience mostly an inconvenience mm -hmm. um the premise is that all these people come in and they come to a motel and there's a crazy woman running it can I have a room for the night? The storm knocked your power out, huh? You know where the road narrows back? The tree fell down, it's blocking the road. Can I have a room, please? Do we know why? No. No, we don't. Like, her daughter was like a Satan? Oh, yeah, no, her daughter wasn't a Satanist. This starts out with her daughter and a bunch of her like stuffed animals down in like the basement area. And then this woman comes down, thinks her daughter's doing some occult shit, Or... <laughs> thinks her daughter... <laughs> <laughs> he said a bad word. Sorry. I told you. I told you never, never to do... And then just kills her with a scythe the yeah. whole time. Like, it just kills her. <laughs> and then jump cut, next number of years or something going on, flashback to something, and then she decides that she's gonna kill every, all of her patrons by letting cockroaches into their room. Well, it starts out, the first The first one is snakes. They have a snake, and that is like, oh, that's serious. It's not my horse that's bothering me. What is it? Yeah. She 
you think maybe things are going to escalate. Yeah. He, Guy gets, he gets bit in the face of the snake, and the makeup's kind of all right. Mm. Are you doing all right? Oh. What, darling? How long have I been here? He's pretty puffy. It looks pretty good. Uh, and then number two is rats? Yeah, rats. Name of God's angels, did rats come from? They come in, and the guy's like, ah, oh, these rats, and he like throws the rats around. <laughs> and then the next one is cockroaches. Yeah. cares they're uh, just like this is gross we were live tweeting this movie and i joked on twitter that up next was uh she was going to release fruit flies into a room normally in a movie traditional formula for a screenplay you want to keep upping the ante mm -hmm. things start here and you want to keep going up and up and up and up until you're just you're on the edge of your seat this is, they kept no, going down dived, and down and down. Dived and down. into nothing. It, Speaking of diving, Paul, where? Uh, how is this woman getting this stuff into these hotel rooms? Well, as you mentioned, there is a pretty elaborate underground lair that, mm -hmm. for some reason, exists at this motel on top of a mountain. That she yeah. uses to implement her various um, uh, animal friends and reptile friends into these motel rooms. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this whole scenario existed already. And then they just had access to it because it was shut down. Like, I think they already had tunnels and someone's like, hey, I know a place. Right. And then they made a movie there. I, this is distinct possibility, I would say. Not 100%, but kind of pretty sure. Because otherwise, why would you be like, yeah, and then she like has these little weird holes that she sticks rat, never... rats up into. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> uh, not the best movie by, by any means. It wasn't horrible. It was, it was fun to watch. It was fun, I fun enjoyed enough. watching it because it was terrible. Right. Uh, it had a lot of that good stuff to it. So, Paul, speaking, you know, this is a B movie, 100%. Absolutely. So why don't you tell me? Yeah. What does the B stand for in this B movie? Mm. Well, Mike, for me, the B and B movie in Mountaintop Motel Massacre stands for Bah? Because that's how I felt after watching this thing. I felt like it was... You look at the cover, you look at the back, you read the description and you say to yourself, this is going to be gold. And then all the weird stuff that happens in this film and just the fact that you, you feel that they could have really done so much more with it. You know, you, the, the credits rolling, you just sort of go, bah? That's the B for me. How about you? The B for me, Paul, is weirdly similar to your B. <laughs> My B in this movie is... But what? Why? Mm. <laughs> because that's my that's how I felt the entire movie. Anytime something happened, it was it was. But what? Why? <laughs> Are you mad at me that I picked Ba? Because it's kind of you know. Can I be honest? When you said that your uh, your B was Ba, yeah. In my mind, I went. But what? Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry about it. I didn't mean it. Paul, these things happen. These things do happen. Dead. 
Mike, Mike, Mike. <laughs> I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. This movie, you know, uh, the casting wasn't what I would call phenomenal. So my question for you is, if you had to pick a hot tween star out there today in Hollywood to cast in this movie, Mountaintop Motel Massacre, mm -hmm. who would be your tween star? to be oh, in this. That's an easy answer, Paul. Yeah. You might recall in the film, the guy who picks up the two women, he says he's a record producer. Yesterday is dead and gone, and tomorrow's out of sight, and it's so sad to be alone. Help me make it through the night. Yes, you're and right. And the two women want to be famous. They like to sing at the karaoke or something. Right. Here's who I would do. Circa whatever year it was. I want to get a co-op. Hannah Montana. Miley Cyrus. I was going to say that, but that's the same person. <laughs> Hannah Montana. Lindsay Lohan. No, no. Hillary Duff. No. Hillary Duff. Switching it up. Disney Channel stuff. I like and it. And let them be in there and they'll get scared. And, and, I don't know, die. I, well, that, I think that's an a excellent choice. I Thank think you. That would really bring in, uh, you know, the kids to watch Miley box office success all mm -hmm. of a sudden, you know? If I could add on to that. Well, why don't you just tell me your own decision? I'll do that. I will do that. This lady here on the front who plays Evelyn, the crazy woman in the movie. Mm-hmm. Look, no offense, but she's not exactly what I'd call easy on the eyes. Don't tell me you're picking a tween that's easy on the eyes. Let's recast Jessica Alba in the role of Evelyn for this movie, Mountaintop Motel Massacre, and just watch all the young boys get in line to see this film. Mike, <laughs> am I crazy here, or is that a great idea? Is Jessica Alba a tween? At some, I'm sure at some point she probably was. So you want tween age, you want 12 year old Jessica Alba to play? No, I want like Idle Hands era Jessica Alba. Man, she's hot in that. that you see that? Yeah, oh, I've yeah, seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But That's like, like 17 though. Or like today, whatever. Tween, what is a tween really? I mean, at the end of the uh, day. It's 10, 11, 12. Well, why would we, why would a 12 year old be playing an old lady? <laughs> My Doesn't make any sense. See the kids these days. Let's wrap it up, Mike, for Mountain. Paul, let's wrap it up for Mountaintop Motel Massacre. Well said, and let's do that. Uh, like I said, I, I didn't particularly uh, hate this film, but I wasn't crazy about it either. So I'm gonna give it four fingers right there, like on the door. Oh, that's four, pretty good. Four fingers. I'm crazy. What about you? You know, it's public access, who cares? I'm crazy. It's looking crazy. <laughs> Paul, my review is two fingers and four more bringing them to the throat. Oh, you're dead. Yeah, I'm dead. You're totally dead. Well, yeah. Mike died, so thanks for watching this episode of B-Movie Mania, our special horror movie edition. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got really scared. And we'll see you next time, or at least I'll see you next time, because I'm still alive for the next episode of B-Movie Mania! Oh, you're back. Hi. Cool. Yeah. So, when Jurassic Park came out, you were